Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts Carolyn, you are a certified business consultant, a coach, and a speaker, an author, an actor, a model, and a CPA. And a CPA, who, yes. Who does all of that? that? Okay, all that. Where's the bag of chips? <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful, Brains. That's who we have on the show today. A woman that is multi-layered, that can do many things. Carolyn Brooks Collins. She calling in from the GA from Georgia. I've never been to that part of the country, but I'm so, so excited. Uh, again, let me run that down. She is a certified business consultant, a coach, a speaker, an actor, uh, an author, a model, and a CPA. So not only can she count the bunny, she's a creative, She's an actor. She can consult you on business. She can coach you. And she speaks the truth. Let's welcome her to the show. How are you, Carolyn? I am great and happy to be here. It's such a pleasure to be part of your program. Well, thank you. We've been kind of chugging along at this for a while and back and forth. You've been traveling, doing big things. And I've been sitting here uh, trying to navigate the landscape of podcasting so we're finally together this is going to be great i'm looking forward to it tell my brains uh, our listening audience how do you show up in the world oh goodness that's a great question you know i am finding my way i i for the last two years i've said it's been a period of, of transformation uh, but i think of myself as wearing all of those hats that you describe. I am now a motivational speaker. Uh, Originally saying my my focus was on women and women over 50, but I realized my message is for all people as I receive feedback from men, younger people, and as well as older people uh, to say, oh, you know, I I listen to you and I may not be part of of your target audience, but I, I love what you're saying. So I realized my message is for um, lots of people who have been, probably been that round peg in a square hole or, or have been listening to what other people say they should be or do and now need the encouragement to just do something different or step out on faith and get out of their comfort zone, but get out of that little box that someone else has put them in and and really just, I, there's, I was gonna say start dreaming again because that's what I've done is start dreaming again and be open to opportunities. And that is pretty much my my main message. And now, and then I said, well, I need to practice what I preach right? and, as, and stop saying, even if I didn't say them, uh, externally, inwardly, I'd say, oh, that's not me. That's, oh, that's not me. That's not who, who I am. That's not what I do. And I'm now saying, why not? And hence the, the modeling, right. um, and acting. And so all of that is, is new. Well, they, you know, people think that we are a uh, relic, ancient relics after 40. Absolutely. Life kicked in at 50 because I came to the realization that I'm not promised another 50. And I'm at the second half of my life. These are supposed to be my golden years. I asked my mother, I said, mama, how is it living at 85 and 90? She said, it's the pits. (laughs) And I said, well, you know, if you make it that way, and she didn't like to travel anymore. And, you know, aches and pains and the body wears on you, but it's the mindset. It is definitely your mindset. You still transport yourself through books, through movies, through music. Uh, through family gatherings. So there's a lot that is left in the second half of life. And grandparenting, I'm a grand muppy. I'm not a grandparent. I got a puppy. (laughs) Uh, But that is the teachable moments. You know, you've already 
done the trial run with your kids. Now you have grandkids. But working with individuals, adults that are trying to make this transition, it can be difficult. What gives you the secret sauce to be able to be a strong motivational speaker? Motivation is something that comes from within, but what is the external force that you pour into people to get them up and running? It's really knowing, I think, living living my life. Uh, people, you know, like you hear that phrase, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. And people say, oh, you've not been through anything. Your life has been perfect. And I can say, no, no, it's not. I have had my mountains. Um, I call them my my winters. And people only see me from the other side of that. And so I can talk about, yes, the things that I've experienced. Yes, I've been divorced. I've experienced um, the death of a spouse, caring for a, a spouse that's been ill, been, you know, downsized. Um, when you start talking about drug abuse and, and, and how it impacts families, that didn't happen to me directly, but saw it indirectly with my family, with siblings. We talk about um, domestic abuse. Yes, I, that I've experienced that. So it's taking those personal experiences and saying, yes, you can overcome this. There is, there is like light on the other side of the tunnel and being able to talk about the strength and the resilience that I experience and what got me through. It, it's knowing that, okay, this too shall pass. And yes, um, I, I know my late spouse used to accuse me of living life with rose colored glasses. And I said, as opposed to what? Okay. You know, do I look, take a negative um, outlook and aspect to life? And I'm like, no, I, I have just been very, optimistic throughout my life and I just knowing that God is has my back and then sometimes I have to sit there and say all right God what lesson do you want me to learn from this experience but still trusting and believing that he's going to carry me through it and push me on on the other side and yeah, it's the question it's asking the question people don't ask the question you know they feel that they can navigate life on their own terms uh newsflash brains it's not in your control you have right. no idea of what is going to be around the corner um you can try to prepare yourself but even if it is something that's adversarial it's there to teach you a lesson absolutely and so I, I i am a firm believer up. you got to step up you got to show up you you have to have the mindset that you can overcome it that regardless of what happens you can overcome it and i'm not saying you know, um, just not being realistic, but still understanding that there is a way to get through it and believing that you can get through it. And then saying, all right, what else can I do? How can I do this? I, I can remember being downsized once I, I joined a department or a company thinking this was gonna be a great opportunity. Girl, and three years into that, the whole department, the whole trip, department, the the whole was <laughs> yes. When I tell you, there are people who lived there, I mean, have been there their entire careers, who sat there and cried, and you know, just the woe is me. What am I going to do? And I'm not saying anything negative about that, but my attitude was, all right, damn, I didn't expect this to happen, but what am I going to do now? I I had lost my spouse. My daughter was still at, at that time uh, when I joined the company, was in high school, just starting college. And I was like, okay, I have to maintain my household, keep a roof over my head, make sure she gets in college. When I was downsized, she was still in college. Mm -hmm. And I just said, okay, all right, this is happening for a reason. Let me figure this out. The company, there were like 70 people in four cities that we all were, were downsized. And we had, they said, all right, we'll keep 20 people. Now that's 20 people out of 70. You do the math, that's 50 people that didn't have a job. And then they and posted. Then you're not, and what you're not thinking about is what's gonna be onboarded to you, the 20 exactly. that you stay. Exactly. That's the same rate and be grateful that you still have that rate. 
you know? I, you know, and the thing is, April, we had two weeks. They told us, then they gave us a week to say, do you want to be with the company? Do you want to leave? And then for the next week, they gave us 25 jobs that we could apply for. And while some people sat there, again, cry, I, I, I remember specifically two women were like, oh my God, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? Um, some people sat there and said, well, which of these jobs should I apply for? I apply for all of them. Even though I knew this job had been slated for that person, et cetera, because my thought was, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? They, they, they can all say no, and I'm no worse off than I was. Mm -hmm. But in, in one week, I had 25 interviews. And that following Friday, they called each of us down to individually to HR in a conference room, and they handed us an envelope. Mm -hmm. And in that envelope, we were going to find out whether we had a job or whether we were going to hit the streets looking for a job. And I just sat there and just said, never expected this to happen. No, and, and you know, you have to, and it's like life. You have to expect the unexpected and prepare for that. So I always tell people, you know what? Yeah, it's great to work for an organization. The Wall Street Journal says on an average, if you're with a company eight years, it's no longer the 20. Uh, but have a side hustle. Something yes. that you will be able to enjoy, but also something that generates revenue. Revenue doesn't necessarily mean dollars. It could be love revenue. It could be health revenue. It could be, mm. you know, spiritual revenue. What is Preach. the investment? <laughs> really? I mean, really, what is the investment? Everybody wants money. And money is not the root of all evil. No. Okay? It is no, not. not. It is how you have a relationship with that money. It's Absolutely. You know, it's how you pay it forward. Those are the kind of things. Money is nothing but energy. It's just on a piece of paper. So you have to figure out how you're going to process these things. And with a great motivational speaker, inspiration, that allows you to do the deep dive. That allows you to pull back the layers of the onion and look at things and examine them differently than you've done before. But you've taken that to another level. Uh, you started acting and modeling at a particular age. How did that come to pass? Oh, my goodness. So, April, yes, I am 69 years old. I'll be 70 wow. in January. Gorgeous. And gorgeous. So, we're a city, I mean, we're during, um, during COVID, we were working at home. And I normally like to work in peace and quiet, no distractions. But I had my cell phone on. And I was listening to Les Brown. I, I knew who Les Brown was. Mm -hmm. I couldn't say I was a big follower. But he asked the question, um, do, are you loving what you're doing? Are you living a life you love? And I just sat there and said, uh, no, no, not at all. But his, from there, it took me to one of his programs, his um, Power Voice program, which led me to another uh, course. But I started watching people on commercials women on TV and said, oh my gosh, there are a lot of women my age, a lot of actors in commercials who are older than me. Then I just Google acting classes and I took a course with John Casablancas. Now I realized that was a, there's so many more opportunities and, and, and courses, but, and I recognize that John Casablancas is a good start it, but it taught me and introduced me to the industry. And from there, I then um, uh, signed up with a, a website called All, All Casting. And, you know, I still was working, still saying, okay, maybe something will come of this, but not really focused on it. And one of the, uh, a, a talent agent out of Charleston reached out to me earlier this year and her goal, she scouts the internet for new models and actors. And she does like a, an intense training, modeling classes, acting classes. And then she takes them to these events. So I went, I mean, I was busy traveling on vacation. And, and when she wanted me to come to these events, I'm like, okay, I can't do it. I'm out of town, can't do it. But I signed up for one of her events for Atlanta. And did her training, 
went to the Atlanta event at the end of August. And believe it or not, I got an agent. And she was like, oh my God. She said, this is your, she said, Carolyn, that's unheard of. Your first time out, you got an agent. But I just had a rapport with one of the agents, one of the talent agencies here in Atlanta. And she loved my story. She loved the fact because I retired last year after 45 years of working as a CPA. Um, she loved that, loved that story. And, and she actually does a lot of uh, acting, um, has a lot of clients who are act actors here in Atlanta, does commercials, uh, does um, corporate events. And so she was looking for someone who could do all of that. Now, of course, her first step was, all right, I need you to take more acting classes. And I'm like, okay, I'm a sponge. I'm here to learn. Right, right. And that had just taken on a life of its own. I'm taking acting classes twice a week, um, learning about the industry, learning about commercials and open to now and, and submitting work, doing, doing uh, real acting reels that I'm submitting for commercials. And hopefully I get picked up. That is beautiful. And you know what? Uh, there's something that, that I want to piggyback on that you said. Uh, you said learning the business. Brains, understand that it is the entertainment business. It is the entertainment industry. That means, again, a contract. That means yeah. knowing what is a good fit for you. That is being a good listener and not being manipulated. Every role that Carolyn is going to get is not maybe gonna be pleasing to her soul. You have to have integrity and you have to know about the money. Uh, I could tell you some entertainers because I grew up in the entertainment industry that we had had to take collection for to put them oh, in this, yes. okay? They left with nothing, but their heart was in the work. Mm -hmm. They were the creative, they were the accountant. But again, like Oprah Winfrey said, sign your own checks. Yes. You know about the money. As a CPA, a lot of times, even with entrepreneurs, I want you to speak to them because they think that, oh, well, let me get a Venmo or Cash App or PayPal. Uh, IRS, they report to them too, baby. Don't let a flood of money, anything over $600, go through there. It will be reported. They think these are their personalized slush funds. They don't keep good records. They don't file their taxes. And I mean, you April. know what? You could, you could get a million dollars and not file your taxes two or three years. IRS take everything and you got to beg them to release it. You got to beg them. Rather, you have the documentation there. They work their own timeline. Please talk to them about the money, Carolyn. Oh, April, you have hit a, a, a subject that is near and dear to my heart. First, just as I meet people and I told them, I said, I am not a tax specialist. I don't do taxes, I do my own, but I really want people, if you're in business, you have got to be able to track your expenses. You need to understand your business. You've got to know, all, track all of your income. You've got to keep it separate from your business income, separate from your personal income. You've got to know what, what money is coming in and what money is going out, and you've got to report it on your taxes. But I've told people even who, who are doing that I've met at various events, I'm like, you know, this is a business expense. You've got to treat this as a business. All of your transportation, your travel expenses, those are honest business expenses and you can write them off. But you've also got to offset that with any income you make. Um, and even if you don't make earn income in the first few years, you still can have expenses. But it's the people who are treating, like you said, a, as a slush fund, not documenting their expenses, not even knowing what they're doing. And then the people who are in business for themselves, but they have someone else handling their money. You have to trust, but verify. Okay. You have to know okay. what money you are earning. Okay. And just because you have a loved one that you care for dearly, all right, that if they're not qualified to handle your finances, uh, they don't need to be doing that. I've seen so many women, even I'm saying smart, brilliant women, CPAs, and I, I speak to this in, in one of my messages, is 
that have been so happy, and I'll just take a few examples, not calling names, happy to be married and wanting them, you know, to know that their loved one, that they trust them and they, um, two circumstances. One person said, oh, I'm just so happy. My husband takes care of the mortgage. Didn't know who the mortgage was with. Girl. Didn't assume it was being paid. When she knew anything, the house was in foreclosure because the, the husband decided he's going to, he, he wanted to be out of the marriage, stop paying for everything. She didn't even know what, didn't have any idea of their Wait, own girl, their personal I got, finances. I got a better one than that. I've got a family member that told me, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a kept woman. <laughs> You uh -uh. kept in the dark, baby. You kept in the dark. In the dark. God blesses the child that's got his own. You know? Yes. Remember that mama always has some money in the cookie jar. Yeah. And, My mother and it's always not said. Just for you to be able to escape or or whatever. It's a sense of independence. It okay? is. It is a sense of independence. You are not, uh, you should not be dependent on anybody but yourself. People don't just leave a marriage. They get disabled. They yes. have uh, mental challenges. You may have a, a flood in your home, whatever. But to be able to have those resources and then to know that you are an independent contributor to this relationship gives you some leverage, Brains. Absolutely. My mother said, my mother, and in fact, I just passed this on to my daughter who's turning 35 next week. But my mother had three things. She said, every woman needs her own money. Now, my mother was a homemaker. She took care of the finances, but she said, Carolyn, every woman needs her own money. And, you know, she had her, her other little three main words of advice, but it's like, never say what a man won't do. That was one of them. She said, but given the circum right circumstances and the right situation, he, he will or may. So, but she had listened to women say, oh, my husband would never do that. She said, mm-hmm, okay. She said, I, let me let me talk to you in a few years and tell me what never, how never look, what never uh, looked like. You know like. what? Uh, and another thing I've had to turn some young women on to is the fact is that there are other women that will do what you won't do. This is true too. This so is true too. It's about it, It's about pleasure, but also there's nothing wrong with self-gratification, with being mm -hmm. proud of yourself and looking in the mirror and seeing a reflection of an accomplished woman. Not only have you been able to navigate through, you know, business, adversity, acting, but you wrote a book. Tell us a little bit about that book. Well, April, I have been co-authors to several anthologies mm -hmm. and I am working now on my own book. But the, 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 I guess the chapters or articles that I wrote are contributions that I made to these anthologies were very cathartic, but I talk about um, living your best life, uh, having, expecting more out of your life, but talking about some of the, the winters that I've been through and ultimately the summers that I have gained and now enjoy, but it's all of these chapters and whether, and I don't know whether I can show any of them or not, but. Absolutely, I'd love for you to share. So this one, I don't know if you can see it. Let me, I think I have a, let me take this off. Uh, I'm actually going to, I think I have it on blurred, but it's the Women of Power. Oh. And in this book, I really talk about finding myself and finding, uh, living my best life and understanding what that means. Um, I talk about in a book called The Greatness in You. And this is with uh, John Tallarico, one of my mentors and Les Brown, also another mentor of mine. Um, I talk about just what is inside of us, but expecting, um, just expecting great things in my life. One of the things that I that has let me, I guess that's kept me going. Um, I was going through a divorce when I was oh 27, 28, and went to a it was just a fair, and I found this little plaque with a quote by Camus that said, In the midst of winter, I found there was in in me uh an eternal uh summer. 
or I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but it was similar to that. But I kept that plaque throughout that time um, because I felt from the outside looking in, I had the perfect marriage. I had married my high school, college sweetheart. But three years into it, I realized it wasn't what either of us had expected. And we all had, we both had different ideas about marriage and it was not the best decision. I, I felt I was villainized by all of our friends because he was the perfect person to everyone from the outside looking right. in. But when I saw that plaque, I just said, just hang in there, Carolyn, you are doing the right thing. And I left and I ended up having to leave, move. I took a new job and just started over. I left Maryland, moved and took a new job in Rochester, New York, and started my life over. So I talk about that in some of those, um, some of my writing and talking about what it was like to start over at that young age. And so even now, when I hear women who are leaving their marriages and people are like, well, what, what is she crazy? And I, and I say, I never question a woman's decision to leave because there are things that are going on that we aren't aware of. And she is making the best decision for herself. And that's what I have come to know and believe and not second guess other people's decisions. That's beautiful. Because we don't know what's going on in their lives. You don't. And, you know, what would you tell, in closing, uh, what would you tell a woman that's in that space, you know, mm -hmm. that just is really at the crossroads and said, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn down this noise. Okay, I am going to spread my wings and fly. Yes, it's going to be difficult. Yes, I am going to run against some adversity, but I'm going to be free. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to be free. And so that, and then also what do uh, that same individual have to look forward to when she coaches with you? Great questions. I will tell that person is to finally put herself first, that it is okay. And that she needs to believe it will be all right. That self-love, oh my goodness is more important than anything that we give so much of ourselves to other people that it is okay to put yourself first. And I will say it might be difficult at times, but my goal is in coaching women is to say, let me help you find the path to your happiness to putting yourself first and walking through that learning, learning about yourself. Cause so often we haven't done that. There are so many aspects to our ourselves that we haven't explored. And part of my coaching program, Confidence with Carolyn is helping women explore those different paths and know that they are making the right decision, that there will be ups and downs, but helping them to have that positive attitude to get through this phase of their life and on to the next phase. Absolutely. Cause it's not over to the fat lady sings. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's true. Carolyn, please tell my brains how to get in contact with you. Uh, if they want to work with you, if they want to follow your career as an actress. I'm going to be looking on Netflix and all the commercials. Maybe I'll see you in one of those Super Bowl commercials. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Cause you've got the look. Absolutely. And you've got the poise. Uh, and I think I would really, really enjoy that. Tell my brains how to get in contact with you. Well, definitely they can reach out to me at carolynbrookscollins.com. My website, I'm actually redoing my website, but you will be able to reach me there and my and reach me on, uh, on uh, social media, on Facebook and Instagram at carolynbrookscollins. But also you can reach me at, but through email at, at uh carolyn.brookscollins at gmail.com. But definitely my website's the main point of contact, carolynbrookscollins.com. Well, we're going to be looking forward to that. We're going to put all of your contact information at the rear of this interview, as well as in the show notes. You know, brains, men, women, millennials, look inside yourself and ask yourself, what is it that I really want? Do you know how many people can't even answer that question? 
Oh my gosh, yes. They are enamored by the next little shiny object, you know, or they're envious of what someone else has, or they're waiting for direction from someone else. But do some mirror work. Sit in front of the mirror. Uh, it's not rocket science. Just sit there for 20 or 30 minutes. It will blow your mind. You will be, uh, something will reveal, will be revealed in you that you never even knew existed. So find out what it is that you want and then proceed in that same course of action. What I want you to do <laughs> is I want you to subscribe, like, love, and share this podcast. Like, love, share, and subscribe. We want this inspiration, motivation, transformation to get out to as many people worldwide as we can. It's important. At 50, really, truly, you are living your best life. Ask my mama. At 80, it might be the pits, but that too is a choice. Thanks so much, Carolyn, for being here on The Edge. You are a queen. Thank you so much, April, for having me. This has been a pleasure. I appreciate you. Bye, Brains. Bye-bye.